Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Grand Finals 2015. Our first two games are already in the record books and they were a little one-sided, but let's hope for something better in Game 3 because we do have a couple of fantastic teams for you in our third match of the day. Our first team are well known to World of Tanks viewers all around the world. They are a former European champion, the former champions of the Rumble in the West. Please make some noise for Schoolbus! And they face a team who are young, inexperienced, but extremely hungry for glory. Please welcome Yato Gaming! Okay, time to check back in with our analysis desk, led by the one and only Joshua Gray. Thank you, Paul. Pleasure once again to be here at the desk. We're joined by a very special guest from the cast and the crew. We have Dominic Waffler Rasta joining us, giving us some expert analysis and also taking a break from today's competition. Congratulations on your first victory of the day. How's it feel? Yeah, thank you. It feels kind of great that we won the first uh, match 5-1, although it should have actually been a 5-0 because of that crash. But anyway, we're really happy that we, uh, that we won it. And actually, we already are now and for in the second day for sure. Just depends on the seat if we will be first or second, but we will see that later. So you made it into tomorrow. Congratulations yes. on that. One step closer to becoming a champion. $150,000 on the line. You're going to be joining us for this game, School Bus versus Yato. I want to talk about School Bus first, and make sure to send in your votes, ladies and gentlemen, at the website, thegrandfinals.com, and use that hashtag, thegrandfinals, on social media. Uh, School Bus is a team that I have some experience with commentating and hosting at the Rumble in the West. Very dominating team coming from Europe, the number one seed from Europe. Let's go ahead and take a look at School Bus. not the first time in Poland. We like it very much. People are very responsive and uh, like tanks uh, very much. So it's always fun to play in front of the Polish crowd and uh, always nice to be here. We made these t-shirts after we decided to become a school bus and uh, and after thinking uh, about uh, what we want to wear, we decided that uh, we wanted to do something unique that nobody did before and uh, make our t-shirts uh, to look like we made them as our homework to fit the style of our team. We're not scared of anybody in this tournament and we are ready for anything. If we are careful and we do everything as planned, we will win. A lot of confidence coming out of school bus, and a little bit of fun as well. Mojo, this is a team that has been dominating in Europe. Why? Season four taken, uh, rumble taken, Virtus broken again, and then season five, total struggle in a new format. They barely qualified for offline. They were one point above the margin. Last match decided will they even go? And they, of course, as usual in offline, play great, just great. In first match they wrecked Kazna, but then Kazna rose from ashes and beat them in finals. But they are not the guy that take it hard. I know they will just keep on going after that. The thing that is important now is they made three player changes for this after the season. So they have now Griffon, they have uh, FC Dynamo, Vorsik, and FC Dynamo. Two of them coming from GGVP and Vorsik from Vpro. That will, I think, significantly improve their gameplay. 
Dominic, you face this team. What is it like to be on the opposite end, to be an opponent of School Bus? Well, it kind of depends on what stage of the tournament you actually meet School Bus. I think they're kind of similar to us. They improve quite a lot over the tournament. Like in the f first games, they aren't that strong. They will become stronger and stronger. And um, yeah, they also play kind of uh, similar to us. They don't have a, like a captain in tier 6 that is like micromanaging um, everyone they have. Really experienced players. All, every player of them is really experienced. Has been playing for at least three years, and they just like uh, get on positions. Then they decide together what to do, and this is really a big advantage because every player is giving his input, and then you can make the right decisions. We'll talk a little bit more about the experience between these two different teams and how it's going to factor into this matchup. Been seeing some overwhelming odds in the last two matches. Maybe the same thing today, maybe something different from our Chinese team, Yato, a team, as Paul said on stage, they're young, but they're hungry. And that type of determination can sometimes tip the scales in some teams' favor that have a fresh look at World of Tanks or a fresh new strategy for some of these maps. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at Yato. Yato Manmeo 全力, Yato, and welcome to the Grand Finals 2015 stage. The mentality of adapting to your opponent, I feel, is very, very dangerous because you're always going to be reactionary, reactionary, reactionary. Your thoughts on that, Dominic? Is there a time to adapt or is there a time to take charge and lead? Well, um, you have to adapt depending on which team from which region you meet. I think it's a big difference if you meet uh, like a Western team like Russians or, you to, or if you meet an Asian team like the Asians. I think the, uh, you can t say two things about them. You do not know a lot about them. That can be quite dangerous. But what I've seen from them is they play really, really aggressive. So you definitely need to adapt. Maybe you set up defensive in the first two minutes. See uh, if they make some uh, YOLO rush uh, somewhere. And if they don't, you can, yeah, of course, you play aggressive, but you need to like, really watch out for the aggressive play. So, yeah, I would say you have to adapt to your opponent. Okay, how critical are those first two minutes in battle number one? If your opponent's going to blitz, do you, as a team, how do you communicate they hate their blitz and they're coming right for us? What do you do in that situation? Yeah, well, we tr just try to focus fire. You just say the first, uh, any one of our seven players can call a target. We don't, like I said, we don't have a captain that is, like, uh, making the calls all the time. Anyone can say, we focus this guy, then everybody is immediately focusing this guy. And this is usually working for us. So we just focus fire and we try to win. Focus fire has been the detriment of some of the teams today, as we've seen Mojo, and that's a key principle, a key focus fundamental in World of Tanks. Mother of all. Yeah. In those crisis moments, uh, you can literally see a good from a bad team, because if you do not play as one in those moments, it's seconds deciding who is winning. We're going to wait for official confirmation from the admins for the map order, map choices for these two different teams. I was very impressed with how School Bus was able to handle themselves against the American teams of Rumble in the West. American teams could even take a game off of them. I don't want to see that same type of matchup here with Yato versus School Bus, but if there is one strength that School Bus has and sticks to, one way that they play the game probably better than anybody else in Europe, what would it be? Yeah, like I said, that they have, don't have a captain. Everybody can like make decisions. I think the Chinese they play differently. They have they have a lot of decisiveness because they have one captain making the calls. But Scubas doesn't have that. They like all coordinate with each other. They have more input from different players, and they have also a lot of more ideas on how to 
like play the game, and I, I think that's the biggest advantage. Does it ever get crazy on comms? Does somebody have the responsibility saying, hey, clear comms, stop talking, we got to focus? Yes, yes, this is okay. uh, also for us this is happening quite a lot of times, like, but uh, we still manage to stay focused in the game and still stick to one decision. I think Highway is a very loud person when it comes to that. <laughs> <laughs> is yeah. he usually the guy that does it? Yeah, him and Elian are usually the guys who are doing that. Okay, well, let's talk about the maps that we've seen so far. The last series, we saw Ruenberg, Steps, Cliff, possible tiebreaker. We haven't uh, seen Himmelsdorf yet. That's haven't cool. seen a lot of heavy tanks yet, more of the open battlefields. Ruenberg, kind of that hybrid. Uh, possibly some Prohorovka play. In America, we're seeing a lot more T-32s being used on maps like Prohorovka and Steps to dominate certain sections of the battlefield. Haven't seen too much of that yet today, so far. Is that a viable tactic that Europe and CIS likes to use, or is that something that's just very specific to America? Mm, really, we lost the secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't think that European and Russian teams use that much T-32s. Of course, Harris has also used two I-3s on the uh, Proko attack, but usually the, on pro maps like Proko you use seven light simply because you can outflank your um, enemy. Also, after the T-54 has been buffed, there's no real reason to attack any other tank with armor. T-54 has really good turret armor. You cannot penetrate it that easily unless, of course, you hit commander hatch. So um, if you want to send some tank on some position where it has to play hold on, you can use the T-54. It's like three times faster than the T-32. So yeah, I w I'm not following the American uh, league too much, but I would say that it's an American thing. It's an American thing. Yes. Well, that makes sense. T-32, it's an American tank. Yeah. Well, I know voting is open right now. A lot of yes. people are sending in their votes. How can they send in their votes? That's right. So they should go to the wgl.gg slash vote and then vote for the, for the team that they think will win. And the important thing they need to do is to predict the exact score line. So if they do everything right, they have a chance to win a branded Razor Kraken Pro headset and 10 bonus codes. So good luck, guys, and cast your votes. So they get a Razor Kraken headset as well. So they get the Death Adder we mentioned earlier, and now we have a headset. Yeah, it's for, for different prizes for different votes. Gotcha, gotcha. So there's a lot of prizes. More yes. prizes we're going to talk about That's throughout the day. That's a lot of prizes. And throughout the weekend as well, and a lot of codes. A lot of codes as well. A lot of codes as well. So also, if you use the Grand Finals hashtag, we will choose 10 most brilliant, amazing, interesting, creative uh, tweets. And so these people will get bonus codes as well. And that's 10 per day, right? 10 today and 10 yes, tomorrow? Yes, that's 10 per day. That's a lot of stuff we're giving out. That's you sure enough. we're OK to give that stuff out? Sure. OK, I trust you. Are you jealous? I'm very jealous. <laughs> I'm very jealous. All right, well, we're still waiting for the map selection here, folks. We appreciate your patience as these two teams are getting set up. Uh, the KV-5, let's talk about this tank, the moving wall that I like to see. You already smiled and rolled your eyes going, why? Nobody uses this tank. Does it have any practical value in this tournament on any of these maps? No, I ha really highly doubt that it's going to be used. I mean, it's, it, it has uh, most hit points of the all tier 8 tanks, but it's so slow. And like you have this uh, weak spot, that R2-D2 weak spot on the <laughs> yeah, KV-5. Yeah, we're very familiar that, with that. that uh, you can always penetrate, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't see a reason to use a KV-5 on any map at all. Like on city maps, you have the ice 3 Maybe you can use a 110. Uh, maybe even a KV-4 on, sometimes you see that on Himmelsdorf defense on the yes. European server, but definitely no KV-5. Himmelsdorf would be the map if we ever see it. Yeah, if, It's yes. a big if, I know it's a big if, but some yeah. people have their fingers crossed if we get to see it. Mojo, same reaction to KV-5? There's probably a better choice, you would think? Himmelsdorf may be in, the, in attack, maybe, but I think uh, KV-4 more likely. And there are three map choices, Prohorovka, Morovanka, and the tiebreaker map possibly will be Himmelsdorf. Prohorovka being the first selection, I think I was right on that one. Morovanka the second. And the Magical Forest, we're seeing a lot of these teams utilize that forest at the beginning so well. Morovanka was added into the season, uh, he was in season four or season five. How did you have to adjust to that map for Kasna Crew? And do you like Morovanka compared to the other maps? Um, I actually like Morovanka, it's quite a tactical map. You can do quite a lot of things, also you can choose from, uh, you can actually use heavy tanks if you want on that map. So you have a really a lot of options. It's not like a map where you can just go there and you will defeat your enemies. You can, it's, it's really tactical and that, um, yeah, I, I kind of like it. What kind of heavy tanks would you bring to Morovanka? Because usually we'll see IS-3s or T-32s mm -hmm. in America. Yes, you see the tier as well. If a team actually goes in defense for a heavy tank, it's usually a T one T-32. 
Uh, sometimes you go for an I3, but T32 is the most used tank. Prohorovka, the first map here. We saw a bit of a one-sided match at the beginning of the day today. Are we seeing teams utilize this map correctly, or is it just turning into a railroad infestation every single time in that mid-ground? Or seen some teams use the hill effectively. We've seen that evolution type kind of happen uh, since season three or four. I but still didn't see the real tactical game. Yeah, same. It was too fast, and uh, the, one, the game after the restart was actually, I, I didn't like it because they knew what Kazna was doing. Uh, Kazna, as they dropped, didn't change their tactics, which was their fault. And they just went blindly in. Blindly in and overmatched them in one narrow space. And that's not a measure of map. That's really not a measure. We need to see pushes starting of the caps, decoys, rotations. Yeah. Then we will see. A lot of decoys on those, on those flag caps. Because that can really set traps for opponents that start to have limited options. Because once you put a timer, not necessarily the battle timer, but the flag timer on the map, and you start to see that tick down more and more and more. The defenders start to get a little bit stir-crazy. It's the skill then to see how do you cover the capper and actually not want to cap all the way because fighting there is a better option when the guy, other guys attack. And other guys, how will they distribute their tanks? Where will they push? Will they show it? Did they already win the rails and prevent the vision to the other team? It's all details and they will lie in details. All right, hopefully we'll see a lot of those details in Prohorovka, and hopefully you guys have sent in your votes and those hashtags. Ola's going to be standing by all day long on social media. And now our commentators are standing by for the third match of the day. Take it away. Thank you very much, Mr. Gray, and welcome to all of you just tuning in. For those rather sharp of you would notice there's a little bit of a cast to change on the desk. My name is Mitch Leslie. I've come all the way from Australia, and on my left here is Randall Holcomb, our man from the WGL and a Randall. Some massive games already we've seen today. Some perhaps one-sided games, but plenty of thrills, kills, and explosions. Absolutely. It's just been so much fun to watch all of this. It is one-sided, like you said, but I think that speaks to the level of preparation and skill of some of the top teams, and it's really no surprise. You look at those matchups, absolutely top teams going against teams that don't have nearly the amount of experience as their opponents. Well, I mean, we can see this matchup for us, of course, Yato, a team we haven't seen much of. And actually, something that the analysis test didn't really touch on is that we, these guys are a new team. They were formed in October 2014, just after the, the WCA, so sort of the new uh, World Cyber Games, as it were. And they did compete recently as well uh, at, at an event called the China Mianyang SciTech City Cup. Now, this tournament, we saw Navi, Elong, GGWP were there as well. Uh, and Yato did well. They held their ground. They got out of the group stage. They took down Reforn, and then they fell to Navi 5-1 in that final game. You can see School Bus, their, their opponents today. So, you know, these, these guys, we don't have a great deal of information on them. But we have seen them play before. They were a new team. Inexperience is always going to be an issue. Yes, but I think, just like you said, the lack of data to allow you to really get a feel for what their play style is, what their real strengths are, what their weaknesses are, it, it does work against you when you're trying to figure that out because you, you don't know what to expect, which means that you're probably going to start the series a little bit slower, just like we were seeing earlier with Kazna, for example, just not quite full aggression or full confidence right out of the gate. School was, I'm expecting, is going to hold off a little bit until they really understand what Yato is all about. After that, I'm, I'm expecting them to really get into their groove and start working and getting that momentum that's going to carry them through the rest of this tournament. Now, Yato, they do have that advantage of being complete wild cards. They can pull out a lot of different strats. They can try and really trick up all of their opponents. They can play a different style, and if they can succeed here, they can switch up to something maybe they're more familiar with and take that into another series later today, really catch their opponents off guard. Well, our first map today is going to be Prohorovka, ladies and gentlemen, characterized, of course, by the rolling hills and undulations on the western side and the railroad straight down the middle. Great for obscuring your tactics from the enemy team. Exactly, and it's just such a natural divide that allows you to get some spotting, get some great holdowns, use American tanks, also RU-251s and some Bulldogs, which can be very effective on this map. We haven't talked much about School Bus yet as we start to get into this one, but these guys, of course, Season 4 champions. Right? They managed to topple Virtus Pro at the very finish line. Look out for Nuclear in this game, especially. 
That T54. We're seeing, we're yeah. seeing a lot of those today. And beforehand, maybe not so much. We, we'd always see a few more RU 251s thrown in the mix. This time, players have definitely cottoned on that, uh, you know, the T54 lightweight is a tank to be reckoned with as well. Uh, Nuclear was the first, really, in Europe to start playing that tank. And he mastered it before anyone else. And it was a huge component of School Bus's sort of performance. But these guys, and we can talk about online results as much as we'd like. If you get these guys to land, if you get them to a live finals, they will be formidable. These guys are what we call back home land dragons. Ah, okay. So they show up. You don't know what to expect. They're just absolutely destructive. I can agree with that based on past results, based on what I've seen. I'm confident in School Bus. I'm expecting them to do incredibly well in this tournament overall. But here against Yato, they are certainly the favorite opponent. I'd guess maybe uh, if, if I were to throw a bet out there, maybe around 5-2, five, 5-1. Five Something like that? Is, do you, is that around your expectation as well? I would say about 5 2. I think uh, School Bus now, the dream team they've managed to form over recent times. Uh, with the addition of FC Dynamo, Vorsik from Virtus Pro, and Griffin, obviously the fir first and third coming from GGWP. I mean, there have been roster changes, right? For, for, for School Bus. They have changed up their lineup a little bit, and we get to see how it's going to impact them here, but I feel like in the beginning, it's detrimental, but I spoke to Arklick this morning, Randall, and he said, we're confident, we are prepared. You can see the Dark Gods in on your screen. He's uh, definitely, it was Apple Wow, sorry, yeah. Looking uh, very, very confident in their homemade, should I say, jerseys. Yeah, they are, they are actually pretty good. I like, the, I, I like the style, it's cute. It's really, it's really respectable. Now, I do want to return to Nuclear and that T-54, because we are going to Prohorovka right at the beginning of this. I'm expecting that the T-54 lightweight is going to play a huge role, along with maybe a mix of RU-251s, maybe a 1390 mm -hmm. or two, would be an excellent choice. Josh was talking about T-32s earlier, which we love to talk about in America, but I'm not sure that we're going to see that here today, but I do love it as an anchor when you're trying to control the middle or the west side of the map. On the note of the 3090 as well, look out for Star here from Yato. It's actually his favorite tank to play. His actual, uh, his favorite map is actually Prohorovka. This guy, we got his online stats as well. 70% win rate, like your you, you standard sort of big hitting Unicum. This guy, uh, is, we expect him to definitely sort of be taking a, a heavy frag and roll uh, in his team. Obviously trying to put as much damage across as he possibly can. What do you expect to see? Uh, do you expect any surprises here in terms of lineup? Uh, I, I wouldn't expect something too crazy. Yato's had some time to study the European, Russian, American styles and probably is adapting theirs in order to, to really fit in. Because when you are as cut off as you are playing in the, in the southeastern region of the world, you don't get the opportunity to practice all the time with North Americans. You don't get the time to practice with the European teams as much. And it can be difficult to, to really catch up to them or, or to be as familiar with other regions. I know that's, uh, that's something a lot of players have had trouble with in the past, you know. You try and get those practices together, but timing doesn't work out. You have to really change your sleep schedule in order to account for all of that in order to, to, to match up with sure. them. Now, we do have School Bus, you know, in an amazing spot. They, they have been able to put in so much practice. We did get a chance to talk to them a little bit off stage, and I, I can't see a reason why they shouldn't perform well, unless maybe someone gets shaky, uh, maybe a few nerves here and there. You were talking about the new team. That is a point where you can find out, well, under a lot of stress, maybe, maybe there is a little shatter point. There is something that could fall apart. Or you find out that there's a player that's really going to step up and, and lead, really push the team to do even more than what you would expect. We see here on our screen, of course, our delegates from China, Team Yato, young team. We'll just see if the cohesion is going to be up to the task today. On Prohorovka as well, it's the kind of map where you can really put yourself at a disadvantage early on. Your opening moves are so important as well. And whatever information you can also gain on your enemy's opening moves early on can be worth its weight in gold. That's the opening scout run, something that's so delicate at times. Because of how many amazing light tanks there are, you take an RU-251 up to the middle, great fast tank. You can make an incredibly fast scout run, you have a nice low enough profile, and you can fire maybe HE or heat on the opening shot. And if you fire HE, you might just get that little bit of damage. You know, everyone always says, HE always does damage. And maybe it's a little bit of a joke, but with the RU, something you can depend on. And you have to be so careful. And that's what I think School Bus is going to be worried about. On that opening run where they're going to be going for information, they don't know quite what to expect from their opponent. And that could mean they try and scout out or they try and gather information in a place that ends up being too aggressive or ends up finding them nothing at all they could end up walking into a crossfire, losing out on some hit points early on, which is 
very painful. It's, it's difficult to recover from something like that, especially when you're just getting on stage, you're just starting out, you're just getting comfortable. And that could set the tone, that could set the pace for the entire series. Well, what I'd be interested to see here actually is, is how Applewell also steps up. Young player, uh, can be impulsive, but for someone for, of his age, he generally uh, is able to follow the orders of Arklid quite well. And if this new format, is, as we actually heard in the little preview videos early on, in fact, Arklid, uh, starting those, he said that the game has changed now. Your, your callers, your team captains are no longer sitting in a T1. They are now, they have to be in the heat of the battle. And think about how that, it's so much harder as a team captain because you have to call, you also have to play as well. You're gonna be put in a high impact tank a lot of the time. Arklid might, you know, might go for some artillery. We know he's a fantastic hardy player, but still the game has changed. And it, as I think, as was said by Deluxe, it's harder than it was. Yeah, I certainly agree. You also have to think about the future. Because as the caller, you're thinking about not the next 10, 20 seconds, you're thinking minutes down the line. You're thinking towards the end game. You're thinking, have we given ourselves enough time as a defender to draw this out or, or to, to succeed in, in holding off an opponent which is just aggressive? Or, as the aggressor, did we give ourselves enough time to clean this one up? Because you're going to spend those first few minutes trying to feel out your opponent, find a weakness, and then exploit it. If you can't, and there's three minutes, two minutes left, your opponent's going to be able to draw this out. And you're going to have really stressed yourself, wasted energy, not learning nearly enough and not taking it to your opponent and really setting the tempo. It's actually a really great point you bring up and I throw over to the, uh, the APAC region here briefly because it was a similar situation that happened in their finals. Arete was almost, well, almost decimated, one tank left and the size of Prohorovka, the undulations and hills really allow you to move around without being detected. The last player on Arete managed to survive only just. He went up the hill on the eastern side, he managed to win and that was a 5-1 victory for Arete. Yeah, we've seen that all over the place where someone just barely slips by. We've seen that a few times earlier today. And with Prohorovka, Muravanka being our maps for today, these are two places where you're going to see teams try and salvage a, a battle by going for the draw, splitting their forces, and just trying to draw tanks in different directions so they can force 1v1s, try and win out in that individual player skill situation, and then get the draw on defense. Or you're going to see them have to try and hurt an opponent in. You're going to have to surround your opponent and you cannot let them escape. If a tank gets into the backfield and M41, you know, Walker Bulldog slips by, that could be the battle. And it could, it's this tiny little thing, this tiny little mistake, and maybe he doesn't even help in the fight, but he's, he's alive at the end and you, it's, it's really painful. Well, as we do say it, ladies and gentlemen, make sure to get your predictions in. Uh, with the hashtag, um, hashtag the grand finals is a great way as well. We can get involved uh, on at thegrandfinals.com and as Ola pointed out earlier on, tons of ways to get involved in the social media goings on as well. Maybe get yourself some cool prizes. So but predictions here, I feel like generally leaning in the favor of school bus. It's been said they have won the last two out of uh, three uh, main events here. There you go, wgl.gg forward slash vote. So we can get involved in some awesome stuff going out there. So, I mean, we, we can only learn so much, I guess, but we can see, we know what school buses sort of win percentages are on a map like this, don't we? Yeah, on attack, they're 60%, which is favorable, but you have to look at their defense, 66.6. .6. So exactly two thirds right there. They're going to perform incredibly well on defense. Attack is where Yato can hold them off. And I, I don't expect Yato's going to have nearly as much success attacking against school bus. No team is going to have very consistent success attacking, so they're going to have to go for that 2-2. At least, that seems like the reasonable prediction from a captain's perspective. You're not going to expect to set the pace really early. You're going to have to just try and get your points so you don't fall behind. Then try and bring it back on Muravanka. And then when we go to Muravanka, defense, again, very strong for school bus, but only 55% on attack from Muravanka. That is a place where you can hold on the defense. You're also not going to have a great chance on um, attacking. You can maybe take it to a tiebreaker at that point. And when we go to Himmelsdorf, then it's a little trickier. Himmelsdorf defenders, it's, I think it's going to be very based on the sides because Schoolbus is a comfortable defender, comfortable attacker. You're going to have to hope that you are, I'm, it's going to depend on Yato's 
comfortable as on attack or defense in that situation. Whether or not we see that third map will also, of course, depend on who had the quickest attacking rounds if we did come down to a time breaker situation. But ladies and gentlemen, we're just sorting out some issues here in front of stage, getting some machines ready to roll out. We're gonna do a very, very quick bake break, should I say, but when we come back, it's gonna be School Bus versus Yato, our third game of the day, Group A, don't go too far.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Expo 21 Centre here in lovely Warsaw. My name is Mitch Leslie, and to my left is Randall Holcomb. We are here to bring you the third game of the day. Yatto going up against School Bus. Few issues, few kinks to iron out, Randall, but we are almost ready to get into the game. And while we did have a little time to think, we got to look at also some strategies, lineups we might be able to see. Expecting some great things here. Have a look at that. You can see uh, Applewell got his face right up in the camera there. We're at the Pro Rock for the first map. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. First thing we notice, look at the two five ones for Yato here. Yeah, we've got two of them for School Bus. We've got just one, just one. on the side of Yato. They're definitely going for the T-54 lightweights. I like the T-37 choice on both sides, but we're seeing a T-69 by Shanish, which I think could come into play, especially if School Bus can slow this one down, kind of pace it out, and utilize the autoloader in short bursts to get some serious damage onto Yato. This is like a whole team scouting on the entirety Whoa, of Yato. What is he doing? Why is he heading so deep into enemy territory? He is going to be able to go into a death late, but with the positions of School Bus, the second he peeks up, this is going to be very dangerous. He hasn't lit in any of School Bus, essentially, so he's walked straight into, essentially, what could be a trap at Star. Their sharp star, star, who their star player is, might be in a bit of trouble here. Shanish goes a little bit low as well. You can see Xiao He putting one into Shanish. Shanish a little bit caught, so Star, despite going deep, Randall, he's getting some flanking shots here. Although we do see a reaction from School Bus, they are going to move down to the south, kind of bring it in and go right into Xiao He. That is going to start a fight, though. We have almost one for one trade, and there we have the first kill. Xiao He going very, very low as well. We can see the damage towards him. Applewell getting out scot free for the moment at least. Nuclear is in the mix here. He drops a big hit. He'll go down as well. Back and forth it is. Yaddle with a slight lead at this stage. Vorsik finds Zhang Doi as well. And you can see the uh, Shako trying to get on out, out of there as well. There goes FC Dynamo. This is, was that a team kill? I think it was. This is madness right now. Yeah, this is absolutely great for Yato. They're getting the focus fire. Applewell is one of the final, never mind. And Vorsik, one left. He does not have the damage or the hit points to deal with this. Straight away, Yato, straight up the guts. It looked like they were looking for a scouting run, but the first game in emphatic style, Yato picked that one up, and I'll tell you what, they have come out guns blazing today. I did not expect a result like that. T-54 going all the way across the middle and managing to get into a, a, an amazing death plate. We were talking about this during the break a little bit about the T-54 lightweight's front plate, if you can get a solid angle, and we saw that actually come into play a little bit. T-69, unable to react to a T-54 position, no one from School Bus was able to safely cover or deal with that. It, it, was, it was bold. Started this one off to an amazing pace. Yato has really put School Bus on the back foot. It absolutely pulled the rug out from under School Bus. You see, they were actually trying to use the one-two line and stay hidden for the most part. And that's why we saw when Star pushed up, and I said, watch out for this guy. When he pushed up, you could see that none of School Bus were really being lit. They all were aware of Star's presence, but none of them really bothered to try and assist there. So one by one, bit by bit, we saw Shanish caught out with the T-69, which is never a position you want to be in. You got a four-shot overloader. It's not enough to really get yourself out of trouble. Exactly, and without the proper cover fire, someone to just at least threaten the position, he's just not safe. Now, we were talking about this before the match started about how I was expecting School Bus to just kind of hold off a little at the start, play it a little slower, kind of wait to feel their opponent out and see what they were going to do. But Yato, I think, predicted that and said, we're going to come right at you. We're not going to give you a chance to figure us out. You're not going to get comfortable. We're going to go right at you. We're going to set the tempo. We're going to follow this one all the way through, and they can, they can continue this on. If they can f force School Bus to just stay off balance, they're, they're taking the ability to set up straight away from School Bus here. And they, you could see they wanted to passively gain some information, maybe be a little bit careful, skirt around the edges. But Yato were the attacking team here. And, oh, man, they're really living up to uh, that sense of the word here. So we're going to be very quickly into our second match. And now School Bus got to be shell-shocked about this. These are the guys have, who've been at lands, They've been at live events. But they definitely would definitely be thinking about a response. You can see the intensity. Look at Artlik. Arklid, he is just oh, stoic as they come right now. Really just... Uh, Stony face group here, Yato as well, extremely focused. You can, you can see they're out to do some damage here. Will the same thing work twice for them though? That's the question. That's, that is a big question. Are they going to expect a complete change up? Are they going to alter their play style for that? You're seeing the T-54 lightweight choice for School Bus still, but you're seeing still the two RUs. But they realize now, I think, the extra, we're not seeing any T-69 School Bus, like, okay, we understand how it is. You guys want to brawl? We'll brawl back. All right, and we're going to have an up and over from Yato. They're not even going to wait, moving 
and oh. crashing into each other a little bit. That is going to hurt. We're seeing Hen taking damage, and just to get into position, they're paying a toll of over a thousand hit points. That's right. I mean, that room has gone quite low as well. You can see Jean Dewey and Shaco trying to go across to the road, but so far, Schoolbus are keeping him at base. Shannish is going to be the guy getting jumped on. He always seems to be the man in that situation, but let's see what Schoolbus can trade for Shannish now. A lot of shots coming out from the tree line there. Shaco going very, very low. Jean Dewey especially low. However, the tank advantage, the gun advantage, still with Yato. Exactly, but hit points. You're seeing Yato go just below 5k. They will go below 4k hit points. That will mean we see a few guns fall off the battlefield unless Yato can keep their tanks alive. Shaco has to stay alive. If he can, that could be huge, especially with that tank advantage. Get one more focus down Vorsik. Arklet, take one of them. It's just going to fall like dominoes. A little bit of a, a, a lapse here, a little bit of a lull, perhaps some time for Skullbus to collect themselves. Hen is low, Star is exceedingly low, Wumu as well. Look the rest of bus. Look out of an A3. We got this, an RU251. That is Shaco. He is going to move north. We, I love this. Boxing him out. We have a response, proper response from school bus that could save them in this. An RU getting all the way onto the flank and being unable to be spotted could allow them to bring it back and damage. Well, that was actually the flank from Yato that didn't quite work out there. You see, they didn't lose a tank early on, but they shared damage. They all got quite low. The difference is here is that school bus, while they may have had one less tank, the focus fire for Yato may actually work against them here. It may just, and also I really like our clip moving. This is school bus thinking in the middle of this fight. This is a very tense situation, very delicate, but very quickly it is going to start Stop to wrap up because you can see numerous tanks on the side of Yato. They can't take one shell, two. You've got uh, Zongdi. Maybe two shells. Okay, Dynamo going to come over the hill with Nuclear as well. They're looking for Zhang Dui. Nuclear's going to go straight in towards him as well. Bit of reload time for that T-54. Nuclear may well go for the Ram. He is one of the best T-54 players around, and he is definitely looking for his next target. All right, one more kill, and that's going to be it. We get a little first person, and that's going to be game number two. There you go. A little bit of a different story this time. The setup for Yato seems similar. And of course, School Bus went in the same direction as well. They, they knew that something would be coming here. This time, different lineup, different uh, different nuances in their rollout, I feel. I, I felt like they just wanted to get the T-69 out of there so that in the brawl they would be able to do something, but their, the T-54 lightweight has less hit points, a little less armor, and the burst from a T-69, if you're going to run the same strategy and expect that kind of aggression, you're going to be able to get out more damage before you're taken down. And Yato did bring more aggression that time. I have its slight alteration to their strategy. They did go all up and over instead of the slightly more tactical moves of last time where they kept tanks hidden below the ridge so that they could pop up at a later time, kind of surprise their opponent. But this time, not a big change from Yato. I'm not sure if they're going to have a, a depth of strategies numerous strategies or if it's going to be kind of a theme and variations from Yato on Prohorovka. It will be interesting to see if they continue to try and throw caution to the wind. I mean, they might think they have a plan, and they may well have one, but it always seems like to come down to a little bit of a dice roll sometimes when you have those head-to-head -head fights. I mean, on Pro Rovka, you choose east-west, or you choose to stay aggressive, you might hold back, and based on your opponent's opening move, you could find yourself in a very uncomfortable position. If you're not aggressive enough on the west side, you're, you can be surrounded, flanked, and cross-fired down, and it can be a, a few minutes before you're done, but it would have been decided then and there right in the first minute or two. East-West is a very uncomfortable place to be. I think School Bus could do well in trying to go East-West, but they are doing much better in the brawl the second time around. They just were caught off guard maybe the first time, is what I'm thinking. I have to see if there is more than one dimension to Yato's play as well. We've seen it with some of these newer teams. It's like they attack, and if plan A doesn't work out, there's not always a plan B. The difference here is that Yato are moved to defense now. So obviously we've had our first two rounds. Now School Bus have to attack, but... If, I've, if, if I can draw any conjecture from the play that I've seen from Chinese teams, EL gave me a great example of this. We may see Yato still push aggressively on, even as defenders. I am fully in support of being an aggressive defender. I don't think that you need to get on defense and say, OK, we're the defender, that means we have to sit still. It means you have to defend the cap. It means you have to keep it safe. Or you can just use it as bait. It doesn't matter. You have to achieve victory. You just have different win conditions. So you can go out and ride out and meet your opponent if it makes sense. You can go and start being highly mobile, flexing all around the battlefield when it makes sense. You can be static if it makes sense. But you have to understand what you're doing and why. Because if, if you're just going to be static because you're the defender, I, I don't agree with that mentality. Some people have adopted that, 
but it's something that is very easy to get past once you realize that you have some incredible positions you can achieve if you just open aggressively and grab some territory and then dictate the pace to your opponent because you are, you're on a timer. Play on that timer, you can, you can dictate everything. All right, well, it's time to see if School Bus can perform on the attacking side. Yatu now to defend. Let's see who takes the first initiative. T54 Lightweights here, two M41 Bulldogs though coming out here for School Bus. Yeah, Arklet and Applewell in those. Absolutely one of my favorite T7s in the game right now. It's got such firepower. You're able to set the pace early on and we're gonna see a fight right in the middle. Yet again, it looks like that's how it's going to be. School Bus decide they might want to be attacking. We often see, you know, teams use either side of the hill. But look at the pushover. Wimby's going straight towards the map. Well, Narc, they're trying to put some shots in his rear end. But Zhang Dui and the rest of Yato are coming right up behind him. But there's the ramp kill as well. Arkley dropping very early in the round. Although look at the hit point, School Bus still leads in that area and they are going to counter push, taking out Star while leaving behind Arklin and Applewell. Those M41s had such potential damage, it is just gone. But huge advantage for School Bus, hit points, tanks, guns on the battlefield, everything is in their favor. The overmatch is so real right now around mid. Dynamo going a little bit low as well. Chaco should, should be, out, be able to get out of the fray at the moment. Jiaohe dropped low, he gets taken down. Griffin will find him as well. FC Dynamo down in response, but it's a distinct advantage in favor of School Bus. They will clean up Yato here. Fairly easy, I should think. Zhang Dui, there's no way he's getting out. And there it is, School Bus. Show us that they know how to attack just as well as defend. Exactly. It's Aggression. That is how they're trying to decide this. Yato just wants to get in their opponent's face. They don't want to let them deal with all these tactical situations. They don't want to have to answer questions that they're uncomfortable with. You're against a foreign opponent. You don't know their little intricacies, the things that they're used to, the little tricks they might be able to pull out. Well, don't let them. Just make it a brawl. Try and win on individual player skill. And you see in battle one, Yato is able to meet them, play well, and come out on top. Battle two and three, yes, school bus comes back. And that, I think, comes down to School Bus's just LAN experience, their, their individual player skill. We know they're just a team full of all-star players. I bring it back to the dice roll that I brought up earlier on. It always seems like, or at least in these last few games at Yadawa, uh, they have literally milliseconds to pick their fight. And you saw it, Star, Wumi went straight over the hill. They wanted to take down Arklit, but... Uh, if you cut the head off the sake, sometimes the rest of it might wrap around you or the head will normally bite you. The fact is, is that School Bus had all the liberty in the world to see Yato push onto them and choose their overmatch, which was distinctly in their favor. It was like a five to two. Yeah, I really enjoyed the way Yato was flexing to deal with that situation. They saw two M41 Walker Bulldogs on a flank in a position where if they went up and over, they could box those tanks out and really take them on, create an overmatch for just a few seconds and from there, they might be able to, to work with it, especially if School Bus had, hadn't pushed. If School Bus had held back just a few seconds more, I think tempo would have gone into the favor of Yato, and they could have started getting more and more momentum, dealing a little bit more damage, catching that lead in the brawl, and then finishing it out. But because School Bus reacted so quickly and didn't hesitate to respond to their, the attack on their M41s with an attack of their own onto a few tier eights on a high ground position, they they took one play and just turned it around on them. Well, now, the question stands. Do Yato have a plan B? Can they defend? Can they play maybe less aggressively? Can they play the odds a little bit more into their favor? We're on very, very soon to Prohorovka. You can see now the focus on these two teams. Arklid rallying his troops here to try and put them up three and one. Let's have a look at these lineups, Rukil. All right, we've got T-54s again. A lot of the same lineup. School bus not changing a thing. Yato going with what they believe will work. Okay, well, let's hope, you know, at least for their sake, it does. We need to see more than one dimension, especially from these teams if they want to make it out of the groups, but it looks like we're going to see much the same lineup here, a little bit maybe over towards the western side, but Yato punching straight down the middle. They want Ark. It's like he's got a target painted on his head. They are going to get the overmatch. This time they stick together, though. They only lead the one T-37 in mid. Is this a better situation for them? No, I don't think so. School bus has a high ground position. They're going to have a lot of advantages from that. They can pick and choose their targets, seeing the focus going on to Wumu, and from here they can shift to target after target after target and split members of Yato apart and just take him down piece by piece. Janis, two shots of quick succession, three towards him. He's going to drop as well, but Nuclear will get Hunwai in response. Xiaohei full help in the mix as well. Shots going back and forth. School bus with a, with a minor lead. And I say that seriously, it is a minor lead. Griffin going to get ganged up on now. It is really a dice roll right here. Uh, I think we got the three versus two. Hit points going in favor of School bus. Reloads right now, and we've got Nuclear still on the battlefield. And we know how amazing he can be in a T-54 lightweight. And he's in trouble here. He's very low down. 
just under 400 and he's trying to, well, he doesn't have any teammates to really help him out now. He will drop and the last player, Xiaohei, managed to keep himself at a distance here, much like Applewow did for School Bus, and maybe there's something to that. Maybe, but he is at full hit points. If he could have shared a little bit, we could see another gun on the battlefield for a few more seconds, and that could be, that could have been what Yato needed in order to get this fight, but Zhao is on the run. He's got his rear armor facing a bunch of T-54s who are able to stop in the open, pin him by tracking him, and, and it's just a moment or two and he should be done. He's really just trying to pick his target, so there's not a lot he can do. The Ram will clean him up, and School Bus is gonna make it three and one. School Bus knows what to do, you saw that. Yato deciding to go all in on the M41s that they found last time, believing t they would be able to get the kills faster, and then follow that up, working kind of just as that rolling horde of tanks, just going one after one after one. But School Bus isn't going to fall for that. They knew that that was a possibility, that Yato would just go up and over after the M41s a second time, but with more force. So they were prepared to pull out. You saw the M41s just took a right, tried to regroup, and, and kind of bait or pull Yato into a, a bad position, somewhere where all of those T-54s on the high ground would be able to just comfortably fire. It's, it's a really easy situation for them once everything came together. Yato fell completely into it. It, it really seemed like a school bus were able to, again, read the attack, pull out and surround them. They actually swapped sides of the map. That's how messy it was. Yato trying to make a spearhead of it, really just trying to punch through there. But it seems like they are, uh, honestly, it's a lot of resources to commit to a situation that you really don't know a lot about. Yeah, you, you, you don't know where school bus is set up. You don't know where their main tanks are. Yeah, so they spotted, they spotted a bulldog. It's like a catnip or dog nip in this case, maybe. <laughs> but what, is it, what else does that tell them about the rest of school bus lineup? It just seems like they throw caution to the wind and hope that they could be quicker on the mouse one than their opponents. It's, it's trying to catch your opponent off guard. You can't get any faster to middle than just straight to it. So you, you're, you are making kind of a dice roll. You're hoping that your opponent's there and that you're going to catch someone out. And School Bus has been meeting them in that situation. They haven't chosen to evade. I think School Bus is confident that when they meet Yato one-on-one, -on -one, face to face, that they are going to come out on top, that they're more coordinated in a brawl, and that their players individually are just able to deal with the situation better. We're seeing it. We know that we have members of this team who are excellent in the tanks that they're playing. T-54 lightweights, School Bus brings so much experience in that tank. Yato, I, we can't speak to how much they've practiced over School Bus, but we're seeing the results pan out. Well, the next map is going to be Muravanka. And uh, to be fair, statistically, this is not a bad map at all for Yato in their season, in which they went 16 wins, three draws, and two losses at an 85% win rate. And their opponent, School Bus, has a all right record, 55% on the overall win rate, and they are much stronger on defense than on attack, so they should be able to close this out if they can do it just by the statistics. Well, Muravanka, of course, characterized by the hillock on the left-hand side, and what we like to call the magic forest on the right, both structures or terrain features that can obscure your initial pushes. And this is the thing, you cannot commit yourself, if you're an attacking team especially, to a push especially when it is so easy for the defending team to hide their positions. And you can't, as the defender, ride out and go too far east to the magical forest. You might risk walking into a crossfire or finding your opponent just ready for you. We've seen it so many times where the defending team will try and move a, a tank or two over to the north, try and flank, catch something out, or find their opponent in transition to the north themselves, and they'll lose two tanks. Or they'll take 500, 600 damage just for being curious. It's a very dangerous map where you can be punished in an instant after crossing over these tiny little thresholds, these fine lines from east to west, north to south. Do you think on a map like Muravanka where splitting your forces isn't overly uncommon that maybe Yato's sort of all-in strategy might pay off? They can engage in some sort of overmatch situation where there's no risk of them sort of being crossfired by the enemy team? Uh, I think I know what you might be talking about. The one-two pushes that we've seen before. I've seen those succeed but they're so risky. If your opponent sets up for it, they're going to be able to defend. If they don't, and they, kind of, and they respect that you could come from the east or the northeast or that you could be playing around and they try and just be ready for anything, then one two push could work. And that could be where Yato is able to, to bring this one back. But it's, it's so coin flippy again. It's something that you depend on your opponent to make a mistake in order for you to get in there. Which is why I would think Yato might want to slow it down. Take those all-in pushes to 
maybe later in the series, if they can get a win or two, or if they can slow this down, think about their opponent, because School Bus knows what to expect. They know to expect aggression. Why not switch it up? Why not slow it down for a battle? You know, kind of make them uncomfortable, make them realize, oh, they could be more than just this. The question is, do Yato really have any gear but fifth? Is, like, it, it, do they do have any other direction of movement? Because I'm pretty sure I didn't see anyone use the back arrow in that game. They forward were. is the best direction. That's, that's probably my favorite thing about World of Tanks. It's just always forward. When you're in doubt, when you don't know what to do, pick a direction, don't sit still out in the open and, and get yourself torn apart, right? Got to give it to Yato. When they don't know how to deal with school bus, they've decided to get aggressive. There is the monolith. But all these teams are playing for about 22 kilograms solid aluminium, by the way. And let's see if Yato can continue to bring the Blitzkrieg on the map of Muravanka here. Really be interesting to see if they can maybe demonstrate some more tactical depth. Ah, but look at this. M44 from Arklet. This is yes. going to be a map where School Bus is going to try and slow it down. They're going to be starting on attack. And I think a lot of this depends on the artillery's ability to put himself in a safe spot, school bus to defend that arty. But if you look at the, the opening move from Yato, right down the middle, I, I think forward is the only direction they know. I have never really seen this before. I mean, I know that there is artillery, of course, on the side of school bus. Maybe they're trying to take the opportunity to set up away from Arkley. They're pushing straight in towards the tree. Surely not seeing, they can't, there's not a lot of information that they can really gain here. Surely, this is super risky. It is incredibly risky. They're going to take a slight split, sending a 1390 and a T-54 star is going so deep into enemy territory, but they're going to try and pull members of School Bus apart by sending new everyone into the backfield. They could follow this up with a few people left behind. FC Dynamo is in a risky position. This is Carnage, FC Dynamo, with a lot of them coming up behind him as well. Hand looking for a shot into him. FC going to go low. Harklet at the back, but what can he do? I mean, he's always risking hitting his own teammates with his shots here. Nuclear Fiat finds Hunwo there as well, and the shots are coming back and forth. School bus still with a distinct, ha distinct HP and advantage. And this is kind of the way we see it work out. They always seem to have a slight lead after the fighting really starts. They, it's how excellent they are in these tanks. T-54, lightweights and everything else. They know how to defend. They played that way in the last, uh, in the last format and we saw how excellent they were in that situation. Well, nuclear now. He'd be looking to try and clean up here for sure. Trying to chase down Hen and what a beast of a player in that T-54 he is. He'll clean him up and again, again and again. Yato's aggressive pushes are being deflected. Is there another strategy here for them? Yeah, slow it down. Stop attacking like this. School Bus knows what you're going to do and they're prepared for it. You saw how they positioned the M44 and all the rest of their tanks. They gave themselves distance from their opponent to, to really make them pay a toll in order to start that fight. So they could start it at that advantage and then down the line continue with that momentum. See, Applewow was just like, well, I don't really know what just happened there. I mean, they just <laughs> kind of ran at us and we, we kind of won. So, I mean, is it, is it an issue of coordination for Yato? Or does it go far back, like, you know, team fight coordination, right? Yeah. Or does it go back further than that? Is it, is it the, fun, the, the fundamental decision-making process not working out? I think there's a few levels where they should probably rethink things. First point you made, I think that they need to probably decide, you know, on a few new tactics. I think that they really need to work on that team play. You're seeing good focus fire, but you're not seeing perfect focus fire. If they can hone that in, wipe a tank off the battlefield in the first volley, then they're going to be able to grab momentum with those attacks. But we're not seeing enough damage being dealt in that initial clash. You're seeing just a few little hits here and there onto various tanks across school bus. Not that focus, right? You didn't see anyone go incredibly low instantly on the side of school bus. You saw people go completely off the map on the side of Yato. That's because school bus was understanding what to do. They focus fired and they picked a target that was the best for everyone and evaporated it. Fundamental decision making. I mean, it's almost too late for Yato now to change things up. I mean, you find yourself at a, a three round deficit, it's 4-1. I mean, they've squandered one of their, um, statistically speaking, one of the easier sides or easier rounds they're gonna have on Muravanka. They were defending, they had a chance to sit back and allow and wait for School Bus to push onto them. They've got one last chance here. Uh, but maybe not squandered, saw that already, M44 and you're seeing the skill, or you know the skill of School Bus, you're expecting that artillery piece to, you know, just not perform that well, you have to do something Is that enough it. to provoke a full-scale assault with every tank you have, though? Okay, the, the full-scale assault in the way we saw it, I didn't necessarily agree with. I think there should have been something a little bit more sneaky. Maybe you pull out an opening scout run down the middle, try and see what you can see, and then follow up with some kind of flank, some kind of 
hit squad to go around the north or through the south in the swamps to take out that artillery piece and force school bus to make some bad decisions. Okay, Yato with their last chance to defend on Muravanka. Will it be a different setup or will they just go for the tried and well, tested, I guess, maybe not super successful strategy of going straight in? Well, it's going to be it again. We've got Hen leading the way with a, actually a great spawn, giving him a very early lead. And FC Dynamo is going to be taking the first bit of damage, which could be where Yato is able to get this. They're going to back off. School bus giving ground, allowing Yato to spread out a little bit and start moving in with some more crossfires. But you can see the M44, Arklet, is in a safe position. He's got a building to hide behind. And School Bus Vorsic has taken wow. 798 damage. This is surprisingly better, but I don't know what Yato had to do in between battles, what kind of pep talk they were given. Maybe the whole time they were just trying to establish some sort of perimeter. As I say that, they're just going to push into the forest anyway. Let's see if they can get the overmatch scenarios they're looking for there. I think they're looking for Arklet to be fair, but he's well and truly out of trouble. Griffin there just trying to get away from the swath that is being cut through the forest by Yato. Jean Kui will pick up that one on towards Griffin. They do have the HP lead, but that can change in an instant just like that. Now it's dead, even about 100 in it. Shannon's going to go very low. He has got two to deal with Nuclear, trying to assist him from the back as well. Uh, Yato, they just don't stop coming forward. This is what they needed to do, and School Bus just allowed it to happen. They split up, and Yato recognized we need to stay grouped, find one tank at a time, and just dominoes. One at a time, take them down. FC Dynamo drops now. Applewell, Arklet, the last two standing. Applewell trying to defend his friend, of course, on that self-propelled gun, but what can he do against the full force of Yato only having lost one tank? And they're going to come barreling towards them. They're trying to cow behind this house, and you can see Hen, he's just going to get around the side and put a few shots in as well. Applewell, clearly the first target, the most dangerous in that scenario, but Arklet will follow soon, and that is a decisive victory to Yato. Again with the aggressive push, but some, this time, Something just went right. It did. It, they, they were able to slow it down just before the engagement, collect themselves, and then push forward. You notice that slight pause. Five seconds is all they needed to say, all right, we know what's going on, we can see the situation. And School Bus, in the meantime, said, spread out, spread out, spread out, let's create a crossfire. But they didn't get into the right positions in time. They were not given enough time. Yato recognized that if they waited too long, School bus was going to be ready, and it was going to be a very painful attack. They were going to pay way too much, and they were going to lose like they had been in previous battles. They got the... I think it was a good choice. The right amount of time, allowing school bus to try to transition, and just catching them right in that crucial point where they needed to get those tanks out of... Uh, cut off from each other. A reminiscent scenario to their first round where Yato came out strong, and they won over similar conditions as well, but managing to split the school bus defense. Now, for the first time, we might actually see school bus have an opportunity to orchestrate a set defense. Will they be able to get that kind of room from Yato? Do Yato have to overextend to try and disrupt this setup? Or will school bus just be able to uh, hold them off? I mean, based on Yato and the way they've been playing, they're going to go straight at their opponent. It's a matter of which direction. And they seem to choose the fastest one. So right up the middle, just like they did on, a, on defense, they'll do on attack is my expectation. And the defending positions from School Bus, I think, I wonder if tank choices might be switched up. You know, some heavy tanks or, or something a little bit harder hitting to just annihilate the first tank that comes up from Yato. I mean, if you bring something with a, with a large gun, maybe a Waffentrager, uh, you bring some IS-3s or a T-32. Weird choices, I know. Usually not the thing I would agree with. What about T-49, maybe? Oh, t forty nine's not bad. But I, I feel like you're, if you engage at the wrong distance too far away, you're risking wasting that shell and then allowing Yato to come in while you've got the reload going. A perfect, yeah, perfect ambush tank, the T-49 is, of course, but it's about a 23-second reload on that gun as well. I mean, everyone loves the satisfying feeling of seeing that 910 average alpha come up, but it might not be worth it. But may, you know, maybe School Bus might even trade that artillery in and arc that might say, well, look, let's just, uh, let's just admit defeat in that regard. Maybe we would not be wise to try and continue to try and push this self-propelled gun strategy. Maybe we'll see Arklet jump in, uh, you know, a 54 lightweight or something like that. Or, or just bring that T-49. You can just decide instead of bringing something that's not going to hit as hard, you want to have that kind of HE damage and you want to wipe a tank off the battlefield, just bring a tank destroyer or bring that T-49. All right, well, we are going to be into our next one. And of course, Yato with their second round under their belt. This time, 
Got to be on the offensive side. Almost seems like a far more natural uh, approach to the game for them. This time they have, well, more than an excuse. It's expected of them to come forward and attack. All right, well, Nuclear is going to be in a 5100. That's what I was, something along the lines of uh, what I was thinking, but it's very soft. Not a lot of hit points there, but the damage is going to tear apart Yato if they are unable to focus that down. They have to take down the 5100 first. If they fail to do that, these T-54 lightweights are going to be torn apart. There's just so much damage waiting for them. And the positions we see out of school bus right now, they're ready for that one-two line attack that's straight from the north. And they've got the 12T even ready to take on a T-37 for that east side cap. They're prepared for a lot of contingencies here. I like the, the flex from Applewell heading a little bit further to the west. And a, and a T-54 lightweight heading slightly north in order to spot and figure out what is Yato doing? Why are they not here yet? They are sitting up here in the infile, and it's funny because the first time that they're really justified in sort of going uh, a pedal to the metal, as it were, they actually are sitting up here and waiting in the wings. Indian oh. file they are. Maybe they'll come out like that star, of course, the leader of the team. Rallying the troops here as well. He has been spotted as he does try and push his way out. Uh, it's a very chaotic team speak we can hear right now. And you can see bit by bit. And they're not, they're not really committing to a huge push here. They're setting up now on the northern side of that hill. Where to from here, though, Randall? I'm, I'm really stuck on why they've decided to slow down. I know they're trying to throw their opponent off, but the manner in which they're kind of just bounding forward is, is, is a little curious. 1390 retreating back, giving some ground maybe to cover and try and take out any tanks that might try and engage from a higher position onto those tanks from Yano. We see some shots fired now into the southeast, but no real results yet. It might be just blind fire. Hard and heads on those 54 lightweights. So I mean, it's 180 millimeters, 160, should I say, of frontal armor on their head. That's a strong turret. But look at Nyato still poking and prodding, trying to gain some information. You can see Hunwo in that T-37 is pushed wide there at the top of your screen just to try and gain some information. Naturally, he's going to be going head-to-head -head with Arklet in that situation. But this is far more ponderous an approach for Yato than we have seen before. Yeah, it's, it's a very normal strategy, though. It's nothing that's... Well, we don't expect normal from these guys. Uh, you're right, you're right about that. This is something that you would expect from a team that takes it slower, that really feels out their opponent. And this shows another side to Yato that we haven't gotten to explore yet. We may be able to see this more in future matches, which is, which is refreshing, because I was beginning to think that they really had only one mindset. And with this slower, this slower speed, I feel like... I think some different tank choices would be in order. Well, I don't really think they have that option at this stage. I mean, of course, as you said earlier, nuclear is going to be really important in his position, but you can see that Yato actually going a little bit towards the middle of the map here. They are running out of time, though, of 3 minutes and 53 seconds to the side. Where are they going to go? Are they going to push a cap? Looks like they're relocating now to the east. Yeah, this is going to be very difficult for them to close it out because of that timer you were talking about. They weren't able to get a huge lead. You only see a little bit of damage on the FC Dynamo. You need more than that. You need a good thousand damage dealt in those first few minutes, and then you can pull out of that position and start another approach, do another attack, and then try to finish things off. But School Bus is so healthy that when the push comes from Yato, they may run out of time, and School Bus is going to be able to win this one by splitting up and winning in those 1v1 situations where they force Yato to split themselves. And again, Yato are not going to have enough time to establish any sort of dominance, give themselves any sort of peace of mind about coming forward, yet again, the die will be cast, and I mean, statistically, 66% of the time so far, it's been a school bus's favour. And let's see if we can rewrite that yeah, particular story. Yeah, Star, yeah, again, going to be the antagonist here. We've seen this K-Line push many, many well, times. A bit earlier into the game, normally we have spotted Griffin, of course, the Star, relaying that back towards his team, but he is the only one that far forward. The rest of your team sitting up. I, I feel like they have, don't have time for this. I, I don't think they have time to play around with it too much, but Star was in a wonderful position. From there, he can get some spotting, put a crossfire on, and that's going to be the cap initiation. We've got Hunwo getting ready, it, hidden right now, but I'm expecting Arklet's going to be able to move forward. It's worth it for him to peek up if School Bus can just get poised and make that volley. They have to wipe the T-37 off. In order to kind of in, in order to secure their own cap. Here comes School Bus over the hill. Let's see what they can spot out. Yeah, as well. Look at the loud noises on these guys. They're definitely making themselves heard to their teammates. The base capture has started, and you can see now 
The 54 low out of Xiao He and Zhong Dui as well is coming up. So they are really forcing School Bus away. They're not going to give them the capacity to influence this cap. School Bus have to choose between resetting and dealing with these tanks, harass them yeah. right up front. Yato, I don't expect to stop. They are going to attack. They know that they have to put two incredibly difficult problems on the battlefield for School Bus. School Bus is going to have to take the fight and they are going to get a reset. And it's, it's right now, School Bus is going to be able to clean this up. And look at the hit points, 5,000 to 4,400. Zhong Dui just got decimated there as well. Wumu decidedly out of position at the moment. You can see Griffin and Apple are put, trying to put some shots in there as well. The focus fire hasn't really been working for Yato and School Bus still with the tank advantage. And now you've got two T-54 lightways in the middle of six School Bus tanks. Two of, two, two of Yato's tanks are on cap. They're going to try a cap fast. That's not going to work. You're going to lose your two tanks in the west, and then it's going to be a matter of time before you lose the cap. Feels like as far as plan B's go, that is a pretty weak one as well. Xiaohei trying to accelerate this process, but he won't even make it to the cap circle. And Shako and Hootmore get to look over the, the desolation that is surely to greet them in moments. 18 seconds left. School bus now going to be creeping up on them. Neither of the Yatung players have been spotted yet. Now Hanwo is lit. The shots are going to come through. There's the reset. School bus look to roll over this one. And just give them one moment to focus fire. I, they've played excellently in this, reacting to a very aggressive team, giving them the respect that they deserve, not getting overconfident. Yato, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed, I'm surprised. It did not expect this level of performance. Well, despite that, School Bus will take the victory. It's a five and two scoreline for them. And I mean, if you're Arklit, as you rally the troops, you can't really complain about that. Applewell, you can see homemade shirts denoting the players. I mean, tough one for Yato, really. It seems like when the time came to, uh, to sort of maybe slow down, it wasn't, it wasn't until a couple of rounds later where that actually happened. I wonder if that was a, an in-the-moment kind of a call. You get into the battle and you say, wait, 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 guys, hold up for just a second. They're going to see us coming. They're going to expect this. Let's actually hold back for a moment. Let's, let's confuse them a little bit. And I was expecting Yato to decide to push forward and just not stop after a short delay. You know, just wait 30 seconds and push from the north. But instead they decided to go with something a little bit more delicate, where they tried to play a little bit of the north, feel out their opponent, get some free damage, but they they just, they couldn't find it. And, and School Bus wasn't giving them room to work with. And then, in all honesty, it's, it's a behavior that we hadn't seen from Yato for the entirety of the game up until that point. So, uh, like a secret weapon, maybe they were holding it back, but it still seemed like even at the end, even when they thought they were thinking it through a bit more, they were still uncertain. They were still changing things on the fly. And they were afraid to commit. And uh, honestly, they sort of crawled towards the finish line and were stomped down by School Bus as they tried to get that cap. Well, School Bus is just so, so experienced in a LAN environment that they know how to deal with that. After the first battle, they knew what was coming. They realized, all right, these guys are going to be attacking us, and they're not going to let up. They're going to wait for us to make some mistakes, or they're going to wait for us to lose focus. School Bus didn't lose focus. They may have lost a few here and there. That first one caught off guard. Okay. Yato starts off on a good note, and I think the head game there at the beginning, well played by Yato. Just not switching it up after that, School Bus was able to catch on to the pattern and work with it. Now, when you go over to Marwanka, they did get their one win. It was a good play. I think the timing was excellent. You can see that Yato knows how to work with timings. They know how to, to read their opponent's moves and also to force some reactions that they can work with. So you, Yato has the ability. Just School Bus is, is a very hard opponent to just meet at a land like this. Well, at least we've seen a little bit of what Yato can bring, and they'll be playing some more of their games uh, I think off stream or maybe on the B stream as well, so you can still keep checking them out. But for now, we're going to pass to the stage. Her host, Paul Chelner, is there with the captain of School Bus, Arklit. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, congrats, Arklit. Good uh, victory in the end. But you said when you came off the stage, you weren't very happy with that because it was 5 2 and it should have been 5 0. Explain that to me. Uh, we knew the style that Chinese play uh, is, and uh, we were preparing for it, but we should not lose those two. Uh, we really did not expect uh, such pressure from the team, and uh, we were trying our best, but uh, we did a few mistakes. You could see it. Yeah, I think, we, I think everyone knows you guys can play better. Um, playing a Chinese team like Yato, you knew they were going to be aggressive, and yet you still decided artillery in one, one battle. Why? 
Well, we decided that just in case, uh, the really uh, six-tire tank does not do too much in such engagements. So, Artillery, if it does like two shots with the damage, uh, the battle is done. So that was why, okay. Um, in the sense that 2015 and 2014 have been good years for you, you've won a European Championship, you won obviously Rumble in the West as well, runner-up in the recent tournament too. Does that, does that put more pressure on you guys to, to perform here and maybe win the whole thing? I, we are quite such uh, guys that uh, we were a year ago, so it doesn't really matter for us. We just play our biggest game. Well, congratulations on the victory here and uh, good luck in the rest of the tournament. Uh, our clip there from Scorebus, they've won their game on the main stage. Let's find out from the analysis team what they made of it. Thank you, Paul. Well, Arklet, again, high performance and high amount of damage coming from his arty. Finally get to see some arty today. A little excited about that. Impeccable before, uh, performance. We saw Rumble in the Wentz once again here. But Yato putting up a fight and that aggression at the beginning. Battle number one, what did they do right? What did Yato do right to start off this match? Yeah, first of all, I want to say I'm really astonished how um, aggressive Yato played and that they have the courage uh, to, against a team like Scubas to play that aggressive. I, I really respect him for that. Um, in the first game, um, Scubas took a T69 and they, uh, the rest of the tanks were behind them, camping in the forest on Prokhorovka. And the T69, uh, the Yato just pushed at them on the 2 free line and the T69 died too fast. Like, they first went at them, they spotted the T69, then the T69 already took a lot of shells. And um, the Yato at this point didn't go uh, directly at them. They first stopped, T69 received some shells. And then um, the school bus that, uh, saw that the T69 is going to die and school bus just counter pushed them. So, and that was the mistake from school bus, what I didn't really understand. They could have just stayed in the forest, maybe let the T69 die, but uh, the, it's, still was better than this counter push into the positions of Yato. But uh, in the second game then, every, both teams did the same strategy basically, but Scubas was better prepared. They didn't use the T69 um, again. They saw that it's probably not that useful. The T54 is better. Like I said before, you don't... You, is that T54, overall? Is that a, are you throwing that gauntlet down? T54 always choose over T69? Yes, always. Okay, always. you heard it, America. It That's Europe for you. Mobile, you have um, actually even more armor on the turret, yes. It's that, that turn is so powerful on the T54. Yes, I can't argue yes. against that. You, you, barely, you can barely penetrate it. So they, the T54 was a way better choice than the T69. And Yato also went too aggressive. I think that first victory gave them a lot of confidence. And they, they, but they shouldn't have like went that aggressive. The first game was really well. They played really well against Kubas, but then the second game they simply played too aggressive. Yeah, hey, you have to kind of put some temperance to that too. It's like, well, it worked the first time. Let's do it again. Well, now your opponent's expecting it. You have to be a little yes, bit flexible exactly. in that scenario. You wanted to take a look at battle number three. I yes, believe a pro just played one thing about the uh, first two games. Like, the mistake in first game, school was made. Uh, when they sacrificed 69, they positioned their tanks behind the road. When the map was changed, that road is actually elevated and prevents 54s to shoot effectively over it because it, they don't have gun depression. So they just lost pure firepower like that. On game three, uh, there was quite interesting clash. It looked like total YOLO. But uh, because school was definitely decided to put food down, I say enough. Uh, but I liked how they used bulldogs. Uh, if you can see on the map, they pushed bulldogs on the left side, like here, and uh, in this area, providing cover high. The other guys held the line here. Yato saw that as a weakness and pushed the majority of their tanks to kill two bulldogs, two tier sevens. While they were constantly shot by 54s, the HP pool was drastically falling, although they had a bit more tanks. And it just fell apart. You could see seconds after the Bulldogs fell, they all died. School was actually made a trap. They were prepared. Either Yat will push left or right. They knew they would push somewhere. So if they push Bulldogs, we're going to do this. If they push the main tanks, Bulldogs will go in a flank yeah. and shoot. So that's a win-win situation for them. Game four, repeated exactly. Yep. And you don't really... You can't really brawl one-on-one. -on -one. School bus guy is there too experienced. 
They have definitely have a lot of experience. We saw that ring around the rosy type of play where the tanks were not sitting in one spot. They would continue to circle and fire at the same tank. The game was really fluent, but yeah, that's how you play. That's how you play. You don't yeah. stand and shoot. It's not a sniping game. Well, in battle number six, Yato again showed that aggression. They were able to get another win. What was the difference, though, in battle six compared to battle two? What went right for them on, on the second map, Merovanka? Yeah, well, in battle five and battle six, when Yato was actually defending, um, Scubas picked an Arti and they went in the forest. And Yato, they didn't camp like Scrubas. They r went really aggressive at them. I think they, they expected them in the forest, so they just to b probably told themselves we can go there and we can kill them in the forest with better position. In the first game, uh, in the first um, game where they defended, Yato, they went there, but they went too aggressive. Again, like in the second game in Proho, they made the same mistake again. They went too aggressive, they took too much uh, they lost too much HP by pushing into the school bus. School bus was set up really defensively. Um, they didn't do that mistake uh, in the next battle again then. They actually um, set it up uh, better their attack and um, they, they went together with seven tanks. And Applewow was actually not with the school bus guys in the forest. He was next to Arklet just sniping. But if you are, Viato was together with seven tanks, it, this means you can focus fire better, you can share more HP, and you can just, um, yeah, you, your tank isn't just a damage dealer, it's also an HP pool. You, you have to share your HP, and Apple was so, simply not able to do that. So they went with seven, they focused fire, and they simply managed to defeat Scubas. And that focus fire in that moment, in that pocket of aggression, went in their favor. If there was hesitation coming from them, if there was second guessing coming from them, that leaves another opening for an already shot up above or for school bus to figure out what's happening and then to regroup. Uh, but good on Yato. They really showed some strong games, some good aggression. EL Gaming from the Asia Pacific scene was cheering for them here in the front seat since they're a Chinese speaking team. And that was really fun to see some of that uh, friendly cheering going on yeah, for us. Yeah, brotherly support is always cool. Yeah, very, very cool. Although, what were the votes like? So the votes were actually all for school bus, like 86% of people voted wow. for school bus. And they were actually right, but how many people voted this 5-2? We don't know yet. I, I saw many people vote in 5-1, 5-1. Like, 5-1, please, but okay. Bad luck. Anyway, uh, we have launched another contest uh, at our Facebook page, which is uh, WGLEU. And uh, this is about the HyperX. We have actually three of those uh, flash storages for 64 gigabytes. So you can win them if you go to our Facebook page and answer a simple question in the app, which is, what comes to your mind when you think about HyperX? Oh, Yeah, this question. is a question for everyone, actually. And please be creative, because three of these things are waiting for you, and also a hundred of bonus codes. And the Gigabyte contest is also running yet. Let me, let me show it. Beautiful motherboard, right? So you should also go to the app at our Facebook page and uh, answer a very simple question. Who won the uh, Grand Finals uh, 2014? And uh, the winner will be chosen randomly, and the bonus codes will be given away, and uh, two of these beautiful motherboards will be given away as well. Do you know if we've selected any of the 10 tweets for today, the most creative tweets coming from our fans using that hashtag, the Grand Finals? Uh, so you just told what is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Have we selected any yet, or we select them at the end of the day? We select them at the end of the day, So I they guess. can still be creative, they can still send those in. Yes. All right. I can't create a new Twitter account, send one in, because I can't do that, guys. I wish I could, but I can't. A lot of great prizes. Make sure to continue to tune in. We have three more matches here for the main stage. 